Hello and a warm welcome to the program today. I'm Layo Olaride. We begin in West Africa. Nigeria is expected to receive former president of Sierra Leone, Ernest Bai Koroma, for political asylum after he was charged with treason and other offenses for his alleged role in an attempted coup in his country. According to a letter purportedly signed by the ECOWAS Commission President Omar Toure, sent to Sierra Leone's current president, Julius Madabio, the economic community community of West African states requested for Mr. Koroma to be allowed to travel to Nigeria, where he's expected to be housed for some time. The relocation is supposedly part of the agreement reached by the mission to Freetown last month with a high-level ECOWAS delegation. In the letter, ECOWAS is also asking that all legal and administrative procedures against Mr. Koroma be discontinued and the government of Sierra Leone should also continue to disburse to him his benefits as former president. Mr. Koroma has been under house arrest since being questioned by police over the attempted coup. Well, he was president for 11 years until 2018 when current president Julius Madabio was elected. On Tuesday, 12 other people were charged over the attempted coup, including one of Mr. Koroma's former bodyguards. Well, the former president's daughter, Danke Koroma, was also previously named on a list of wanted suspects by police. Well, let's get more details on this story. Joining us now is Lawrence Williams, is the editor at Free Tong Post newspaper based in Freetown, Sierra Leone. Hello, Lawrence. Thank you for your time. Yeah, hello, and thanks for having me. What more can you tell us about the letter sent to President Julius Madabio uh, from the ECOWAS? Um, the letter, of course, has been floating on social media even before. Um, the state formally placed charges against the former president. Um, so far, the government has not come out to clarify its position regarding the letter, uh, nor has it yet um, countenanced um, uh, um, the correspondence from ECOWAS. So as far as we know now, um, there is no official communication from the government as to um, the position, its position regarding the appeal um, from the ECOWAS Commission. And, well, you've mentioned, uh, you know, touched on my next question, if the government has agreed to the terms stated in the letter. But how likely a day, even if, you know, they give a confirmation? Well, um, even up to this afternoon, I sent a communication, a, a text related inquiry to the country's Minister of Information and Communication, and also, I contacted the Minister of um, Foreign Affairs, uh, Timothy Kababo. Both uh, ministers have refused um, to make a comment on um, the letter from the ECOWAS Commission. Um, even so, the, the legal representative uh, or the lead counsel of um, the former president in the prison there. Um, uh, has not yet commented on whether they have actually um, sat down and talked with the government um, regarding the content of the correspondence from the ECOWAS Commission. And um, we have also been um, following up um, to see whether we could get updates from the ECOWAS Commission, but nothing forthcoming as of now. So um, as much as the letter is out there, um, there seems to be the uh, no communication, no confirmation as to whether the president would remain or could be flown out of the country to Nigeria. But of course, I'm selling in Nigeria has uh, this very long, strong bilateral ties. And even after the November 26 coup, uh, the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria um, and the ECOWAS Commission as well flown in country here. Yeah? Um, to solidarize with the president and the government, and so assure of ECOWAS commitment to strengthening the peace and security of the Leone. And one of the resolutions um, that manifested from that meeting uh, was that um, an ECOWAS standby force should be deployed in Sierra Leone to maintain peace and security. And the last ECOWAS um, authority, uh, authority of heads of state summit uh, meeting held 
in Abuja. Um, that resolution was passed as well. So there is this understanding between the government of the Republic of Berlin and that of ECOWAS as a, a regional bloc and the commission itself. And of course, um, uh, just recently, the president was uh, has been engaging other visitors from um, within the ECOWAS region. He has engaged with the uh, Nana Okofo, Adu, and some other, and they are bilateral talks, some, are, some of which, <coughs> pardon me, some of which are very close proximity talks, uh, which are yet to be made public. Uh, all right, uh, Lawrence. Uh, let let uh, let me ask you this: Why is his uh, itinerary, you know, seems to be hushed? Because even here in Nigeria, authorities uh, are yet to confirm, you know, the exile agreement. And also, if you could confirm the president, the former president's whereabouts. Well, uh, to start with the last part of the question, the former president is being held in his residence here in Britain. Is basically under outer aid in the sense that uh, he was charged the court yesterday and granted bail and uh, the bail conditions indicate that uh, he should not leave his residence or uh, until otherwise um he haven't secured the express permission from the inspector general of police in addition to that there are restricted number of visitors uh those visitors as well should have or secure permission from the inspector, inspector general of police to be allowed to visit him. And those include uh, members of his political party, his lawyers, his wife, and children. So um, he's basically on our house, I guess, because he's expected to, to, to return to court on the 17th of January. And uh, he has basically been under these same conditions since the investigations against him started following the all right, Lawrence, but why why is exile uh, an option for the former president? Uh, in case, you know, the country finds him guilty, why would he, you know, not want to stay in the country? Well, if you look at the, the letter, um, um, the letter is proposing that all charges, um, legal charges against mean it is continued or dropped, so to speak. Uh, before then, um, the, the appeals court upheld the decision of the commissions of inquiry, which found um, the former president um, wanting for abuse of office uh, and ordered him to refund billions of millions and hundreds of thousands of US dollars to the state corporate. Uh, within a specified amount of time, telling which the Anti-Corruption Commission should open an investigation against him. And um, so there are several legal uh, uh, um, um, problems hanging over the head of the former president, and he's yet to come out of those ones. And now we've seen that the charges have been pressed against him for treason and abolition, etc. And um, so... And the question as to whether it could be flown out to Nigeria um, on a temporary basis is yet to be determined. And I cannot state that the government would consider or not consider that option in the instance where probably the peace of the country is threatened. Um, but what I can say here is that uh, um, prison trial the world over we know it's a very serious offense and um, the though the lawyers of the former president uh, some of which have come out to say that uh, this is a political vendetta, it's a trump of charges and blah blah blah, the state on the other hand through the minister of information has said countless times that we have enough evidence to actually take charges against the former president and um the as to whether it would have to stay in country permanently, it depends on um, whether the court will find him guilty or acquit and discharge him of all charges brought against him. But in any case, um, these interests are very much um, sensitive, highly sensitive issues, highly sensitive felonies, and um, the media says so, and I believe. The ECOWAS region and the wider uh, international community are paying attention to it.
All right, just uh, finally, before I let you go, how are Sierra Leoneans, you know, reacting uh, to this uh, politics? And, you know, does he have any backing from perhaps his supporters? Of course, um, there, 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 there is a mixed reaction among the general populace. You have those who believe that um, the former president is not being treated fairly, owing to the fact that he's a chief man, and even after leaving office in 2018, he has been up and about, you know, um, trying to sustain peace within the ECOWAS region. And um, there are those who believe that this is a witch hunt. And of course, there are people as well who believe that uh, he might have had a hand in what happened. But according to the lead counsel for the former president, lawyer Joseph Israel Kamara, he said that um, the, during the inter interrogation at uh, the criminal investigations department, the police spent about 40 hours questioning the former president, but they could not confront him with any shred of concrete evidence that shows or proves his direct involvement in what happened on November 26th. Rather, some of the questions he were confronted with was whether or not he he knew um, some of those who are considered or labeled fugitives, that is some of those who either worked with him during his tenure as office as uh, president of the Republic of Berlin, and those who have had some interaction within his capacity as president at the time, and even former president. And uh, as you recall, many of those who, or some of those who were named and who have been charged before, have had some dealings with the former president. The state is alleging that he also uh, concealed and uh, 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 teasing. In other words, he had knowledge of the commission of the crime and failed to report or either aided and abated some of those fugitives who the state declared wanted um, following the two attempts of November 26. So there are different reactions. Um, of course, the political situation here is getting uh, heightened by the day. And uh, we all know that former president has, was the leader and chairman of um, the main opposition of the Congress Party. He has the support and backing of his political party. Is uh, some of the, the the leader of the APC parliamentarians have also said that uh, the president is not being treated, former president is not being treated fairly, that he could not have possibly involved himself uh, in any and such uh, attempts to overthrow the state and blah blah blah. So, what of the what, what of the current president, uh, Madabio? Where does he stand in all that's happening? What's his position? Well, in his last uh, nationwide address, uh, the current president reiterated in very strong terms that uh, they will follow the evidence wherever it leads and that no stone will be left unturned in uh, ensuring that uh, those culpable for what happened on November 26th are brought to book. So the current president and government are resolved and determined to actually prosecute those right. who evidence who are alleged to have had a hand in what happened on November 26th. Uh, right, there seems to be no backing out. There seems to be no compromise, especially in the case of the former president. And um, so uh, that is the, the current situation we are in the country. Lawrence Williams, the editor at Free Tongue Post newspaper, Freetown. Thank you so much. It all remains to be seen. Thank you for your time. We're in the Democratic Republic of Congo now. It seems President Felix uh, Shisekedi's win has one more challenge. One of the presidential candidates has filed a petition to challenge his re-election. And this is coming after two main opposition candidates, Moise Katumbi, who came second, and Martin Fuyulu, who came third, had said they would not challenge the results in court. However... Theodore Ngoi, who came last with 0.02% of the votes, is now the only one who has submitted a petition for the annulment of the presidential results. He filed the petition on Wednesday at the Constitutional Court, hours before the lapse of the two-day window allowed for the petition.
Mr. Ngoy, a lawyer and a pastor, also uh, vied for president in 2018, but lost. The court now has seven days to examine the petition, give its decision, and is expected to announce the final results on the 12th of January. The African Union is calling for the respect of Somalia's sovereignty and territorial integrity in response to a controversial deal that landlocked Ethiopia struck with Somaliland for sea access. AU Commission Chair Musa Faki uh, is urging for the respect of Somalia. the unity, territorial integrity and full sovereignty of Somalia and Ethiopia. This deal has caused diplomatic tension with Somalia, condemning it as an act of aggression and violation of its sovereignty, and also vowing to challenge it by any legal means. Somali land ceded from Somalia in 1999, but it's not internationally recognized as an independent state. Well, the African Union and also the U.S. has asked uh, the parties involved to pursue diplomatic dialogue to peacefully resolve the matter amid concerns that the agreement could escalate tensions in the Horn of Africa. In the meantime, tens of thousands of Somali residents have gathered at the Connish Stadium in the Somali capital, Mogadishu, to express their anger regarding the recent agreement between Ethiopia and Somaliland. The Mogadishu Regional Administration organized the rally to allow residents to express their concerns regarding the perceived encroachment on Somalia's maritime territory. Somalis were chanting and holding banners throughout, worried that the lease agreement could undermine Somalia's national interests and put their livelihood in danger. But according to demonstrators, the lease could establish a precedent for further resource exploitation in Somalia. The VOA's reporter in Mogadishu, Mohamed Noor, joins us now for more details. Thank you, Mohamed, for your time. Uh, let's begin with uh, the legal means Somalia is saying it will take uh, concerning this agreement. We know the deal has caused diplomatic tension between both countries, and Somalia has condemned it and says, you know, it will go through any legal means to fight it. Well, um, Somali government uh, abuses uh, whatever effect that agreement and is in a basic step. The government believes that uh, sovereignty has been invaded since it has been bypassed and ignored uh, in order to become the primary uh, point of contact of such agreements. Um, as a sole legal authority, of course, it is responsible for deciding the fate of such agreements. Uh, in addition, Somali government considers this uh, is a violation, an intrusion against the, the sovereign. Uh, since uh, uh, Ethiopia is well acquainted with diplomatic channels when such an agreement is conducted in that manner. As a result, of course, uh, it has used the uh, ring commandship, of course, approach to deal with uh, illegitimate bodies in order to realize it is a uh, long uh, long term dream to have a sea and port from Somalia. Uh, however, Somali government rejected uh, this uh, and asserted it was null and void. And that is the reason why Somali government is opposing that agreement, of course. Indeed, but, but it appears Ethiopia, you know, is going through with the agreement, especially as this uh, deal is expected to give the country access to commercial maritime services and a military base. What would be Somalia's, uh, Somali's government's next step? Well, in fact, the Somali government has already stated this agreement is illegal uh, and the government intends to use all diplomatic journalists available to it in order to protect the sovereign as well as advising its citizens, uh, citizens to stand up for territorial integrity of their country uh, in the case if you get rights violated. And where does this leave, you know, the bilateral relations uh, of both countries? Well, uh, in terms of uh, bilateral relations, Ethiopia and Somalia have enjoyed, uh, of course, very good relations for quite some time. Uh, 
uh, particularly in the area of uh, the battle against Al Shabaab and other fronts. But I have no doubt that this agreement is uh, is it reached with the Somaliland, the breakaway Republic of Somaliland, uh, will have a negative effect on their relations, and this could lead to a spillover effect effect in, in, in the region, of course. And what do Somalis make of this? You know, how are they reacting? And we've seen thousands of residents in Mogadishu, you know, protesting, expressing their anger. Well, uh, an upsurge of anger has swept through Mogadishu with tens of thousands of residents uh, gathering yesterday at the iconic stadium called uh, Konis uh, in the Somali capital to demonstrate their frustration with Ethiopian lease on Somali territory. In order to express their anger, of course, the event was triggered by the strong con condemnation of Somali government um, prominent politicians, uh, including uh, uh, the prominent former Prime Minister of Somalia, Hassan Ali Khair, likewise, like others. All right, then. Uh, thank you so much, uh, the VOA's reporter, Mohamed No in Mogadishu. Thank you. Health authorities in Rwanda have recalled batches of antifungal tablets from Kenya over safety concerns. In a statement, the Rwandan Food and Drugs Authority, RFDA, instructed importers to return all batches of fluconazole 200 milligram tablets, which are manufactured by a Kenyan company. It also ordered all retailers and health facilities to stop the distribution of the drugs and return them to the suppliers. Well, this follows an earlier notification alerting the Kenyan manufacturer of discoloration in the tablets. According to RFDA, some incriminated tablet batches have already entered the Rwandan market. Health officials now plan to investigate the drugs for any adverse effect. South Africa's former Paralympic champion Oscar Pistorius will be released from prison on Friday, more than a decade on from shooting his girlfriend, Reva Stinkamp. He will be barred from drinking alcohol or giving media interviews when he's freed on parole. The prison department insists general parole conditions will apply to him and his high public profile would not make it uh, treat him differently. He is expected to be home at a particular time of the day or hours of the day and participate in programs to deal with anger issues and violence against women as mandated by the parole board. The 37-year-old will not be allowed to leave the area of Pretoria where he is set to live without permission from authorities. He was sentenced by an appeal court in 2017 to 13 years and five months in prison for murder, overturning a previous more lenient punishment of six years. In November 2023, the South African Department of Corrections approved his bid for parole. In more news in the region, the U.S. has dismissed South Africa's case against Israel at the International Court of Justice, ICJ, over the war in Gaza as meritless, counterproductive and completely without any basis in fact. South Africa argues that Israel is committing genocidal acts in Gaza in the case it filed at the ICJ last week. Well, U.S. Department of State spokesperson Martin Miller, Matthew Miller, says even though there are military operations going on that put Palestinian people at risk, the U.S. is not seeing any acts that constitute genocide. Israel has rejected South Africa's genocide allegation, terming it as baseless and blood libel. Meanwhile, the chief of Hamas political bureau thanked South Africa for launching the case against Israel at the UN's top court. And that's all we have for you on Network Africa for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Layo Olangide.